You got the offer or you're anticipating one, which I also love because it means you're thinking positively. Now it's time to negotiate. Not negotiating is not an option, no matter how uncomfortable talking money may be for you. Did you know that men are four times more likely to negotiate than women? And women cheat themselves out of an average of $500,000 across their careers by failing to negotiate those first offers. That's a whole lot of handbags and mortgage payments. So man or woman, intimidated or not, everyone must agree to negotiate a job offer. Because most employers anticipate a counter offer, many include room for negotiation in their very first offer to you. This is truer for jobs at a higher level and a higher salary, but it's something to keep in mind. If you accept the first offer, you may be leaving money on the table. And this could be compounded as future bonuses, salary increases, and even insurance coverage are often based on that initial base salary. Regardless of whether an employer has room to increase the salary offer or not, you should be comfortable asking. But be careful. You never want to make demands or issue ultimatums unless you really are willing to walk away from that offer. Let's dissect the process. A salary negotiation tends to revolve around three factors. What you're worth, what they're willing to pay for you, and what you're willing to accept. Let's start with the first part. What exactly are you worth anyway? It's essential to do your research, otherwise it's impossible to know if an offer is high, low, or just right. To research your value in the marketplace, seek out sources that know what companies pay for the job you're considering. Take into account the size of the company, its industry, and geographic region. It's even more helpful if you can use sources that can help you calculate the potential value of the skills and experience that you bring, such as your degree, type of prior experience, certifications, and other relevant assets. Look to online resources such as salary.com or payscale.com. Touch base with your career service office since it likely tracks salaries within key fields of study. Some industry associations monitor salaries in its field as well. The government also maintains data through the Department of Labor. You can talk to friends too, but take that one with a grain of salt, since many people tend to inflate what they earn to make themselves appear to be a bit more successful. You should also ask the employer directly what the position pays. It doesn't mean you have to accept the number offered, but the response might give you a ballpark range of what they're thinking that you're worth. When determining your worth, take into account what you bring to the table in terms of skills and experience as they relate specifically to the needs of the role in which you've applied. For example, take that teeny burger joint in your neighborhood that's interviewing for a cashier and offering eight bucks an hour. You're not going to be successful arguing that you've got an MBA and therefore deserve $40 an hour. You might be able to tout your customer service skills and your way with numbers in order to get an extra dollar per hour, but keep in mind the position only pays so much. You'd do better arguing that the competition across the street is paying $10 an hour for its cashier. And that's yet another form of research. Figure out what competitors in the same industry and the same area are paying for similar work. Finally, your worth is also impacted by the kind of work you've done in the past. If you've tackled some of the major challenges and hurdles that you'll be expected to attack in this new position, that certainly adds to your value, especially over an applicant who hasn't had the same experience. Don't discount how much your prior successes can impact your current and future worth. Put down on paper any measurable successes that you've had in your previous positions. Did you raise sales by 15%? Did you save your company $50,000? Did you organize a seminar for 1,000 guests? These facts are some of the ammunition that you'll want to have handy. Think value added. Maybe you bring excellent finance experience with you to a human resources position. Do you have any technology specialties or marketing know-how? Are you bilingual? If so, any of these things may enable you to get higher compensation.